Let's talk some NFL. Armando Salguero with us now from OutKick. He's on the JohnsonRVCenter.com hotline. What is up, Armando? How are you? I'm great. Listening to you guys now, I'm hungry. Go eat lunch, man. It's lunchtime. You're in the Eastern time zone, right? It's lunchtime. Let's go. Absolutely. No doubt about it. (laughs) Um, Man, there are so many big stories in the NFL to talk about right now. And I think a lot of focus is obviously going to be on uh, Green Bay or potential other team quarterback Aaron Rodgers. This is just a gut feeling by you because I'm not sure anyone knows. But Aaron Rodgers wears what uniform next year in Armando Saguero's opinion? The Green Bay Packers. And the reason I think that is that the way that he has been talking, acting, uh, would suggest that unless he's going to A, retire, or B, remain with the Packers, He's a great actor um, because he's talked about how everything has gotten so much better for him with the organization, how he has um, appreciated all the moves that they've made toward him, which includes, hey, you know, um, what's your opinion on roster visions? He's appreciated all that. Now, for him to turn around and say, You've done a great job. You hired Tom Clements, my friend. You brought him out of retirement to be the new quarterback coach. And everything is great. I appreciate it. Goodbye. Trade me. <laughs> I have a hard time believing that. Where are we right now on Russell Wilson? I have a hard time believing that Pete Carroll at 70, the oldest coach in the NFL, would want to continue coaching without Russell Wilson. But there are reports out there he's not happy, and there's a possibility even with two years remaining on the contract, he could be going elsewhere. Right. So Russell Wilson last year wanted out of Seattle, right? Um, And his agent even put out – a list of teams to which Russell would be happy to go. That doesn't happen in a vacuum. Obviously, Russell was aware of all of that. What's interesting is that that came out, you know, uh, like a week or two after the season was over. This offseason, you've heard nothing from Russell Wilson in that regard. It just it, It's just strange that it – they're coming off a losing season and don't have a first round pick. He's happier than he was in a year where they had a winning season and had, uh, you know, draft capital to improve the team. I I don't buy that. So we'll see where that goes. But Russell is one of those guys that is very image conscious. He wants a breakup, but he doesn't want to be the one breaking up. So um, unless unless Seattle gets an offer for him, and by the way, there are teams interested in him, and that offer includes a you know good quarterback coming back, say for example a Derek Carr maybe or something like that. Um, he's not he's not going to be anywhere other than in Seattle. Armando's story today sizes up the names and scenarios in the offseason NFL quarterback carousel. It is up at OutKick. If you want to go there, all of you familiar with OutKick from our years working with Clay here on the show, so you know where that is. You've got it saved on your tab bar. So just go read Armando's story today. I'm a Buccaneer fan. Obviously, we're in transition at quarterback. What 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 is the quarterback situation, you think, for Tampa next year? Where are they looking? What are they doing? Is the quarterback on the roster? I don't think so. Do you think so? If you if you listen to Bruce Arians and, and their front office, they're trying to convince everyone Blaine Gabbert's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> and exactly, that's everybody's response. We're laughing at them. We don't believe it uh, because you know what? It's not true. <laughs> and so I'm certain that Jason Light, the general manager, is is on the quarterback hunt and will be on the quarterback hunt. And he now has a formula for, for success. And that formula was not three years and hope that it's good. He's got a playoff-ready, championship-caliber team on his hands, minus, of course, 
uh, an elite quarterback because he just lost the elite quarterback. So his move is going to be, I need to find a guy that can, if not raise the roster, be part of a roster, not, not, not be a detriment to a roster that is playoff ready. And so that's what they're going to try to do. To me, there's, there's quarterbacks out there that make sense for the Tampa Bay Bucks. They're not going to be Tom Brady. Um, no one is. By the way, Tom Brady led the NFL in passing yards this year. Uh, so I think he led the NFL in touchdowns as well. That's hard to replace. But Blaine Gabbert is not the guy. And if you're looking to, to a veteran, well, jeepers, let me see. We just mentioned Russell Wilson. That would make Ooh, sense. Oh, yeah. Mm. Matt, Matt Ryan would make sense. Matt Ryan, not as good. Is Tom Brady, but whatever. Um, Jameis Winston has been mentioned, but I don't know about a return to Tampa Bay for him. So there are names out there that they're going to explore. And in this entire conversation, guys, we have to understand, there are more teams needing good quarterbacks than there are good quarterbacks. So that's why quarterbacks who are already placed get mentioned in the conversation. Armando Salguero is with us. He covers the NFL for OutKick. He is on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. Now that all the dust has settled, the team that made the best head coaching hire was who? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, can we do that in reverse? Because <laughs> Who made the worst believe... one? <laughs> well, you know, I just – it's not necessarily the worst because it's hard to say you're just going to be a failure uh, and the guy hasn't coached the game yet, right? Yeah, but most um, are. I, I mean, the love, truth is most are going to get fired, Armando. Right. I, I don't love the the Dolphins move with oh, Mike McDaniel. Come on. Um, I, I don't see it. I, I think he they hired their next ex-head coach. Um <laughs> I really like what Jack. Armando, did. thank you for being That's... with us. You're yeah. <laughs> Come on. He's a Dolphins fan is what he's saying to you. Yeah, no, I understand. I, I, you know, I, I, I believe that the NFL is better when its legacy teams are good and the Dolphins once upon a time were a legacy team. Mm -hmm. It's just that they haven't been good in 20 years consistently. And I don't see it happening with this guy. But, I, you know, maybe I'm probably wrong. Probably not. <laughs> given their history and, and Stephen Ross's, uh, you know, resume for hiring coaches. Not good. We continue to hear this little rumble that Sean McVay, now with a Super Bowl championship at 36, is going to take a look at TV. I'm the Rams fan here. Um, this would blow me away. The guy loves the game. Again, he just turned 36 three weeks ago. And coming off a Super Bowl championship, when you've got this talent there, when you've got SoFi, you've got everything in front of you, it just seems a little weird. How much legitimacy is there to Sean McVay leaving coaching? At the, at the point where I saw him during – I was there, by the way, um, during media day when he really didn't say, hey, I, I'm absolutely coming back. And it raised eyebrows and he talked about, you know, wanting a family and raising kids and not wanting to be a, an absentee father and so forth. But at the point where I saw him at the victory parade, the sparsely attended victory parade, by the way, um, telling Aaron Rodgers and inciting crowds to, quote, run it back. A guy that has designs on leaving doesn't do that. So I believe that Sean McVay, who was cheering and chanting, run it back, run it back, run it back, is going to what? I think he's going to run it back. <laughs> hey, hey, before you go, um, five games scheduled to be played around the world outside of the, the United States this year. With what's going on in the world, do you think the NFL will look 
at possibly uh, dialing those uh, broad games back before we even get close to the season? Yeah, another good question. You guys are full of good questions today. Um, <laughs> obviously, what is going on, you know, let's be honest. What's going on in Ukraine is not good. Uh, what China is threatening Taiwan with is not good. But I don't know that that necessarily has tentacles all the way to the NFL not playing in London um, or Mexico or, or Frankfurt. Um, I, I, I don't see that. It, I mean, obviously, if there's a world war, we've got issues, just like there was a pandemic and suddenly international games went away. But short of that, uh, I think, look, the NFL is this, this steamroller that just keeps going and going and going. And so short of those kind of crisis situations, I think those games will probably come off. All right, he is Armando Salguero. You can follow him on Twitter right there at Armando Salguero and read him at OutKick. We thank you so much for the time, Armando, even though you uh, disrespected the Dolphins and to a certain extent the Rams fan base. We would love to have you back soon. <laughs> All right, man. Thank you very much. All right, take care. Armando with us on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. <laughs> 